Hello Booktube, this is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a book unhaul. So I took part in Book Trek 2021 last year. And Book Trek 2021 was a five-month mission to read Star Trek novelizations. And the first month was August, and we read books on Star Trek the original series. The following month, September, was novels from Star Trek The Next Generation. October was novels from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. November was novels from Star Trek Voyager. And finally in December, we were to read novels from Star Trek Enterprise. I believe I read 10 novels during that time. And I'm going to do a bit of an unhaul. So let's start. The first book that I read for Star Trek The Original Series was Ice Trap by L.A. Graff. So the premise of this book was the Starship Enterprise had to go to the planet Nordstrahl and figure out why people were going crazy. And while they were there, uh, Ohura and Chekhov went on an away mission to find a missing science team where they met the Kitka. And the Kitka are the indigenous population of the planet Nordstrahl. And one of them was a megalomaniac that wanted to rule the entire planet. Uh, this book was a you ever see those tv shows where it's a filler episode this book felt like a filler episode and it was okay it just wasn't my cup of tea it wasn't a bad book but at the same time i don't think i'm going to reread it the next book i read for the original series was the starship trap and this was by mel gilden this was a better novel than ice trap um, i did enjoy this one uh, the enterprise is called to a star base and in that sector various Klingon, Romulan and other military vessels are disappearing and they don't know why and the Klingons are blaming the Federation. So Captain Kirk is sent to investigate and he discovers that it actually is a Federation scientist that is causing these ships to disappear and the Federation scientist essentially wants to control that sector of the galaxy by making all these military ships disappear so that peace can come to the galaxy. I wish it were that easy. The book was okay. It wasn't a, it was definitely not a five star read, but it wasn't that bad. I did enjoy this book. Um, should I unhaul it? Yeah, I'm not going to read this again, so I'll probably unhaul this one. The last book for the original series month that I read was The Disinherited, and this was three authors. It was Peter David, Michael Jan Friedman, and Robert Greenberger, who wrote this novel. And the premise of this novel is Ahura is transferred to the starship Lexington under Commodore Wesley, and uh, she is sent off on a diplomatic mission to a race that um, is neighbor neighbors to the Gorn. Is it the Gorn? It's that reptile guy that Kirk fought in that episode. The famous fighting battle where they didn't really fight that much. But uh, she's sent there and they're trying to figure out um, why a certain caste. So there's, the planet is based on caste system. And one of the castes are being erased from history. They're, all their statues are being torn down. So Ahura and Commodore Wesley and his team are trying to find out what's going on. On the other side of the sector, the Starship Enterprise goes to investigate uh, starbase, not starbases, but uh, colonies that are being destroyed. And this was actually a good book. So you had three different authors, and I thought it would be disjointed, but it wasn't. Three different authors weaving together two different stories into one narrative that comes all together near the end. And it was a very good book. I really enjoyed some of the passages. I even bookmarked, well, not bookmarked, but I tagged some of the passages in the book that uh, I really thought were well done. You know what? I'm not going to unhaul this one. This one, I'm probably going to reread. The month of September for Star Trek Book Trek 2021, we were to read Star Trek The Next Generation novels. And I picked up three novels for this month. And the first one was Ghost Ship. And this was written by Diane Carey. This was the novel that I liked least out of all the Star Trek novels I read last year. The book is about 
a mysterious creature that uh, shows up in 1995 and causes a Russian aircraft carrier to disappear. And then 300 years later, Deanna Troy wakes up to a nightmare. And in that nightmare, she sees the crew of that Russian aircraft carrier. I mean, that to me was incredibly interesting. And I wanted to read this book. And I started reading it. And it started off well. But then the characters were not like the television series. And this is the difference between this book and the original series novels that I wrote, the char- or that I read. The characters in the original series all felt like the characters from the television show. And unfortunately, Ghost Ship did not feel like that. Uh, Commander Riker was a jerk in this novel. Lieutenant Geordi LaForge should have been brought up on insubordination charges multiple times. I mean, he was just, he was too rebellious. And Captain Picard was always looking over his shoulder, wondering when Commander Riker would take his job. I mean, these characters did not feel like the characters from the television series. I am definitely unhauling this book. The next book I plan to unhaul was The Peacekeepers. It was another Star Trek The Next Generation novel. And again, this one sounded pretty good. The premise is the Starship Enterprise finds this derelict spacecraft in a uh, sector that they've never explored before. And according to their instruments, the spacecraft is thousands and thousands of years old. So they go over to investigate. And that's what drew me in. That's what made me want to read this novel. Uh, But they find out that um, the transporter technology on this derelict is way more advanced than anything that they have. And let's just say Geordi and Lieutenant Commander Data are transported very far away. And Commander Riker and Tasha Yar make a guess that if they use the same transporter technique that was done with LaForge and Data, that they'll end up in the same place. Who knows? The novel never really said that it was going to be safe where they were going to be transported to. They could have been transported into the center of the sun for all they knew. They didn't know. But they did. And the story revolves around this megalomaniac who essentially found a derelict spacecraft similar to the one that the Enterprise found orbiting his planet. And his planet was going through its uh, world war. And he was able to figure out how to use the weapons on this derelict and essentially end all war by controlling all the um, inhabitants of the planet, all the different countries. So that's what the peacekeepers are. It's this uh, group of people that he commands and their job is to make sure that no one initiates any sort of war on the planet. So the planet is held hostage. It was an okay read. I don't think I'm going to read it again, so this is definitely going to be one of those books that I unhaul. The last book I read for Star Trek The Next Generation was Strike Zone by Peter David. Now, I had looked up the author Peter David because I really enjoyed the Disinherited from the original series, and a lot of people had a lot of good reviews for this author. So I picked the book up, and I wasn't disappointed. The book revolves around the Creel, and the Creel are a species that live within Klingon territory, and the Klingons do not like the Creel. They, any chance that they can, they kill the Creel. And I'm surprised that they'd never exterminated the entire planet, but they didn't. And the Creel get lucky. They land on a planet that has very advanced technology, and the inhabitants of that planet are long gone. They figure out how to use some of the weapon systems on that planet. So they attach those systems to their ships and start kicking Klingon butt. And this was a well-written novel. There were various subplots in here, including um, Wesley Crusher and his friend uh, who has a uh, life-threatening disease. And uh, you've got the diplomatic issues between the Creel and the Klingons. And all in all, this was a good book. I'm tempted not to unhaul it, but I don't think I'm going to read it again. But I would recommend this book for those that are interested in Star Trek The Next Generation novels. Again, Strike Zone by Peter David. So the month of October was Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and I picked up two novels. I was a little late to the game on this one, so I only read two novels. The first novel I read was The Siege, again by Peter David. And I don't know what it is, but I really enjoyed this novel. I mean, 
the characters were so much like the television series, it was wonderful. I mean, Odo was a grouch. It just made me smile when I read all of his dialogue. He was so grouchy during this novel. And who can blame him? So the premise of the novel is an assassin has ended up on the space station, Deep Space Nine, and the wormhole itself is closed to traffic. So anyone that was going to go through the wormhole has to stay on the station. So the station is overcrowded. There's an assassin and he's going around killing people. And poor Odo has to figure out who the assassin is, keep his head because of all these other people that are in the station and everybody's a suspect. The novel was written well. I really enjoyed the comedic portions uh, with Quark and his business partner. There was one part where he was in the holodeck with his business partner and they were enjoying a certain holodeck that involved two members of the Deep Space Nine crew whose names I won't mention. But let's just say if those two had found out, one would have been flattered, the other would have murdered both of them. It was a well-written novel. I enjoyed this novel. You know what? I'm going to keep this. I'm not unhauling it. The next book I read for Deep Space Nine was The Tempest by Susan Wright. This was another very well-written novel. Again, the characters felt like the characters from the television series. And the premise of this book was a large cloud of something was approaching Bajoran space. And this cloud was essentially destroying systems, not, not planetary systems, but spaceships, or severely damaging them. And luckily, though, the planet Bajor's atmosphere would have protected it, but this thing that was coming would have destroyed Deep Space Nine and the wormhole. So Keiko O'Brien and Lieutenant Commander Dax are sent off in a roundabout to investigate this cloud of something. Um, Keiko was involved because she was able to sense that the something had biological aspects to it, so they believed it might be a living thing that they could communicate with. It was a good novel. Worf played a large part in this. Uh, this was during the Federation Klingon War, and Worf was dishonored, and a uh, Klingon ship was forced to dock with the station, so there was the tension between Worf and the Klingons there. Am I going to unhaul this? Will I read this again? You know what? I'll probably unhaul this one. It was a good novel. I really enjoyed it, but I don't think I'll be reading it again. The month of November was dedicated to Star Trek Voyager novels. And unfortunately, I was only able to find one Star Trek Voyager novel that I actually wanted to read. And it was The Escape by Dean Wesley Smith and Kristen Catherine Rush. And I regret it. This was a lot better than Ghost Ship from The Next Generation, but not by much. So the premise was Voyager is short on supplies. It's very nearly depleted all of its resources. So it needs to find raw material to produce new material for its ship. It finds this planet that's supposedly haunted and lands a crew, lands Ensign Kim, Lieutenant Torres, and Neelix down and they get transported accidentally back 300 million years in the past. So it sounded really good, so I picked it up. Unfortunately, the book was not really good. The characters themselves felt like the characters from the television show. Um, Belana Torres was perfectly Belana Torres. Okay, it wasn't terrible, but it was a little funny and it wasn't, let's just say, the plot wasn't the best. And um, the resolution, while better than Ghost Ship and definitely better than Star Trek The Next Generation of Peacekeepers, wasn't to my liking. I would have hoped that it was more involved and the story was better weaved. So this is a book that I will definitely be unhauling. So the final month of Book Trek 2021 was Star Trek Enterprise. And we were to read books on Star Trek Enterprise. And I didn't find any in my local bookstore that appealed to me. So I bought an actual ebook and it was called uh, The Romulan War to Brave the Storm, I believe it was. It was the second book in the Romulan War series. And I'll put a picture of it here so that you can take a look at it. And it was a well done space opera book. So I enjoyed that book. Um, there's no point in me unhauling it because it's my ebook. If it sits in my library, it's not a big deal. 
But I did enjoy that book. Uh, it was a little drawn out at times, but overall, it was a good book and I would recommend it. Anyway, so those are the books that I will be unhauling. So out of the 10 books that I purchased, one is an ebook, so I'm not unhauling that. And the other one, The Disinherited, from the original series, I will be keeping that one, but I will be unhauling all of the other ones. I think I'll keep The Siege from Deep Space Nine because I enjoyed that one too. I'll probably reread that as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I didn't ramble on too much. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. Yeah, so The Disinherited was really good. And I'm going to read you a passage from that. This is when the aliens are attacking the space colony. And the administrator of that colony uh, sees everything being destroyed. And this passage really touched me. It was a uh, wonderful passage from the book. And I wouldn't have expected this from a Star Trek, uh, the original series novel. What he got was the screaming of air as the vessels descended. They made a low pass that shook the walls, caused the still morning air to thunder around them. The floor beneath Delacorte's feet shook, and his glass and crystal pieces toppled off their mountings. The room was filled with the sound of shattering, fragile things. Things like sculptures, Delacorte thought, and dreams. That is a wonderful passage. <laughs> like, hats off to the person that wrote this. Who wrote this? Peter David, Michael Jan Friedman, and Robert Greenberger. Whichever of you wonderful authors wrote that passage, thank you so much. I enjoyed that passage.